Wow, we have from Kaduna, Nasarawa. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Wow, Family Worship Center, Abuja, you're welcome. Okay, I think right about now we should get ready to start and others will join us. Okay, Children and Teens Church, okay, Junior Church, yes. So there's the big church, like we call it, and then there's Junior Church. You're very welcome, everyone. Okay. Mr. or Mrs. Olonu Tomiwa, St. Stephen Anglican Church, but a children's teacher, you're very welcome. Uh, okay, so we have people from Abuja, Ibadan, Lagos. Um, I saw Nasarawa and Kaduna. You're very welcome. We thank God for this opportunity for us all to sharpen ourselves for the work of ministry of raising the next generation as disciples of Christ. Thank you very much. Please, at any point in time that we are taking um, questions or comments, when you want to speak, just remember to raise your um, virtual hand and then you will be enabled to speak. So um, today, we are, please let's remember to all mute our mics. Okay, I think admin has muted everybody. Okay, so we are here to talk about ideas for connecting with parents. Ideas for connecting with parents. So in our junior churches, as we have identified, can you all see me? Okay, yes. So we want to look at ideas for connecting with parents. Um, so let's start. My name is Olaide Adeyemo. If you've been on the call since morning or uh, you just joined just before now, um, um, I, am a, I don't need to go through my profile anymore. <laughs> But I'm here just to um, facilitate this session, meaning that I won't be the only one speaking. Um, we will all be talking. I want to talk about ideas for connecting with parents as children's teachers or as teenage teachers in the children's church. So we're talking about ideas for connecting with parents, Olive Tenders Conference 2023. And um, before we get into the conversation, I want to hear from you first, you know, about this breakout session. Should we really even be gathering around this topic? So I want to see in the comment section um, your, your reaction. Do we really need to be connecting with parents? I mean, we are in, the parents are with the pastors in the big church as we call it, and we have the children with us. We are their own pastors. We're working with them. We have our hands full. If you're working in the toddler class, you're busy doing potty business, you know, biscuits and all those things. Um, I want my mommy. I mean, so your hands are full. If you are working with school age children, there's all sorts of drama in there as well. If you're working with teenagers, you have another level of another kettle of fish. So really, do we really need to still add parents to our, our, our buffet? If you wanna talk, I can take one or two people. If you will raise your hand. If not, um, okay. So I can say, people are saying, yes, we do. Yes, parents are the main stakeholders. Thank you very much. Someone has their hand raised. I'll just take one person. So, yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Yes, I think um, it's a topic we need to discuss because um, just relating with, with the children without having to connect with the parents may just frustrate our work. Mm. You know, because there are some parents that have this mindset that their, their, their minds have not been rewired to, they want to raise the children the way they've been raised. They want to mm. do things 
You know, I remember if a father telling the child not to learn memory verses because he had exams to write. And I had to speak with him and tell him that, do you know that the word of God will even help this child to, to understand with the help of the Holy Spirit, yeah. even if thought is better. So wow. if I don't didn't have to go to that parent, I the child, I would just be working on the child and the parent would be frustrating my effort. So mm -hmm. we need to discuss this topic because some parents actually need their minds rewired so that they, they can help the children to grow. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. In fact, you have opened the floor because when you see my slides, you see that you have dived right into the conversation. Thank you so much for that contribution. So we are all agreed that we should be having this conversation conversation around um, 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 our, our connection with parents. Okay, so now why do we need to connect with parents? She has mentioned something that is so cogent, you know, that our efforts can be frustrated if we don't engage with parents. So you can be doing a fast, fantastic work with the children and teenagers in your church, you know, pouring yourself out, you know, dishing out the word of God, instilling the right values, but if you don't have that collaboration from home, it can they can be preaching the, the, the reverse of what you are preaching, just like the example that Mrs. Adetnuke just gave us. So um, we, we are really um, um, very, uh, we need to get engaged with parents so that there could be a good collaboration. So the first point I have here is that we are called alongside the parents to nurture their children. The children, someone said that parents are the main stakeholders in the comments, you know, and that is so true. I mean, that's just the truth. I mean, they are the first custodians that God is going to, God has saddled with the responsibility of raising the children. But then in the family of faith, all we all, children, parents, and teachers, being in the family of faith, we as parents, as teachers, are collaborators called alongside to help the parents to nurture their children in the way of the Lord. Another key point why we need to engage is that um, when we have a child coming to the child uh, into the children's church or the teens church, we we need to know that every single child that we have there comes with every with an element of every significant relationship in their lives. There are inputs from everybody who is sick significant in their life that that child brings into the class. So when we want to deal with the child, we need to know that there are other influences also, you know? So um, that relationship with parents is such a key one that if we don't take cognizance, leverage that relationship, we will be missing out on opportunity to move ahead with effectiveness in our ministry to those children that are in our children's church. And when I say children, I'm talking about children and teenagers as well. Okay, next point that I would like to share is that we sometimes stand as advocates, go between, between the, the, the children and the parents. There are times that parents don't really understand what children are going through. They don't understand the stage of development they're in. You know, maybe a child is having a rough patch, you know, or going through one thing or the other. You know, then there's a way that parents see their children, you know, like we say in Nigeria, see finish. <laughs> you know, there's a way they see their, their children, you know, with all their weaknesses, with their everyday idiosyncrasies, you know, with everything, the whole picture, you know, they see them, there's a, there's a way they see them. But we from outside, you know, who are working not from the biological family ang angle now with the, with the children and teens, we see those children in another light with, some biases may not be there that parents have be, that have in how they are seeing their children. I may not help them to understand fully the totality of who that that particular child is. And it's it's good that parents can hear from us because we have another angle, another dimension. You know, a human being is a dynamic being with so many sides. You know, and it's possible that parents can only see so much. There are angles that we can bring in. Also, when there are issues with a child growing up, you know, maybe developmental um, changes, maybe, you know, especially with, maybe with teenagers, toddlers, and, you know, those very turbulent seasons at times, you know, it's, it helps when they have somebody who also works, who, who monitors, who interacts and interfaces closely with that child 
giving feedback or giving comments, you know, so they will know that, okay, maybe the, um, things are not really as bad as I think, or maybe this, these are other angles I need to also pay attention to. So we stand as advocates, you know, between the children and the parents many times. And it's good that we recognize that position and we take it up, you know, effectively and maximize it. Okay, so we also sometimes have parents in the church who, um, who are also young in the faith and they, don't, they are still finding themselves, they're starting out on the journey of faith in their walk with God, you know, and don't have all the skills and all the, you know, tools and everything they need to raise their children in the, in the way of the Lord. So that is why part of the reason that we are in the lives of both the children and the parents. We are, you know, connected to that family. You know, every child that comes, we have inherited their family. That's just it. You know, it's like every child within the children's church is a representation of their family. And we are ministering to that family one way or the other. So um, we can help strengthen and empower parents to be able to take that, um, um, take up their, their role effectively or more effectively over the children. Those are um, some of the reasons. Now let's look at ideas. I don't know if, okay, let's go on. When we get to some point, we'll take comments. Um, so I like the comment and I'm so glad we took that uh, comment. We let uh, Mrs. Adijunke, I think I got the name, um, speak, you know, cause she, she went straight to the first point that we have on the slides or for this, for this session, you know, mentioning the example you know, and how she engaged the parents one-on-one. -on -one. It's not, I mean, for that particular situation, giving an instruction within the children's church cannot help that situation because if you just say, oh, make sure that you do your um, memory verse and tell your parents to encourage you or to support you or to help you, you have not helped that particular child she gave, in the example she gave us, you have not helped that child because the parents didn't think that a child that was writing the exam should also should be learning memory verses. You know, um, what the Bible actually says it, it's in the Psalms. I don't know which Psalm now that I have more understanding than my teachers because I meditate on your word. And that's the principle that she was able to use to explain to that parent that, you know, it, the child actually even memorizing the scripture enhances their capacity academically. And that's scripture, you know. So that one-on-one -on -one engagement is what um, um, sealed the deal for that particular family, you know. And that child was able was was helped, I believe, by what the teacher did, engaging with the parents one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not enough for us to just stay in the children's church, minister to the children, and or just send messages to book messages to parents. Uh, or just, you know, inform them generally about this and that, you know, it's important that we take on one-on-one -on -one conversations with parents. You know, it's important that, you know, we can demonstrate, maybe show to make a comment about a child, you know, that, oh, this is how this child is doing. Now, if you are going to say something that is not too positive, it's very important that you come up with a solution before you even start the conversation. So you want to report a child or something like that. Make sure that you don't come from the angle where the parent begins to feel, ah, you need this child, you will not kill me, <laughs> you know, or that what is wrong with my child or where the child, where the parent begins to feel hopeless, like there's something wrong with the child. We, not, we must be careful not to come from that angle. Okay, so we come, address the issue. Don't try to paint the child in any particular negative light to the parent you know, because that won't help in any way. Go straight to the point, address the issue and prefer solution, have a conversation and engage with the parents on how we can work together to help the child. And of course, it's good to give positive feedback. Let parents know when their children are making progress, when they are learning things, when they are breaking out of habits, when they are, you know, learning new skills, when they are um, in, in improving or progressing in their faith work, in their development, in their values, their virtues, and all around uh, growth, spiritual and in every wise. So it's good that we make it a point of duty to actually give positive feedback 
what that does is it strengthens the parents to want to continue the work they're doing. You know, they are encouraged and they also get to value our own input. They know that this person is actually genuinely interested in my child. That's what these one-on-one -on -one conversations do. And, you know, it helps them to, to, um, to be more confident in us, you know, and in releasing their children into our care, knowing that we have their interest at the center of our hearts. I hope, um, I, I won't be seeing comments. I hope we're gaining something, you know. So please, you can put your comments in the box over these things that I'm saying. I'll get to look at the, the comments soon. Next is to celebrate important milestones in the lives of the children and their families. Like I said earlier, when a child comes into the children's church or teen's church, as the case may be, you have inherited a family. You may have only one child from a particular family. You may have two or three children in your church. But the truth about it is that they are just representatives of their entire family. And we need to know that their joy is our joy. Their journey is our journey. Their challenges are our challenges. We are one family, you know? So it's good that when there are things that are going on in the lives of these children, we celebrate with the family. If there are things going on in the family, we celebrate with the family. And if for any reason there's something, maybe a downtime, we let identify with them, you know, pray with them if we need to, comment and encourage them. And we weather through it together by faith as a people of faith that we've been called to be. So birthdays, graduations, you know, um, employment, say for a teenager, for example, who has gone to school, get who has finished school and, you know, just let, touch down, touch base with the parents and just say, oh, congratulations on this. If you can show up, if you can give a gift, you know, send a message, make a call. Just to acknowledge that we are with you, we celebrate with you, and we're in this journey together. So that that also registers, you know, that these these children and teenagers are a part of us, and we are not just doing it as a duty. We are doing it out of a delight, and you know, as 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 a, a ministry that is heartfelt. Okay, next, it's very um, good for us to encourage parents to have real life conversations children you see um a lot of times children cannot merge what we're doing on sunday with everything going on monday to saturday they don't see how patience that you taught them on sunday plays out on monday to saturday but if a father caught somebody in traffic, for example, is impatient or something, and then they have a conversation around it and say, ah, God help me. Can you see? We, we need, we, I need to be more patient, you know? You know, be, be vulnerable. So we need to have those conversations with, with, uh, with our parents, you know? We'll still talk about opportunities that where we can have those kind of conversations, either one-on-one, -on -one, but basically, you know, generally, where we encourage them to be real. We don't, you know, I don't know, many of us will know this um, joke about the parent that's always saying, ah, why are you scoring this, this low grades in school? When I was your age, I used to be first. And then maybe one day the child sees the father's report, <laughs> report card or something like that. And so that the father was not first all the time or the mother was not first all the time. You know, let them, let's be vulnerable with their children. So uh, let's encourage parents be vulnerable let the children know that you are also on this faith walk you are also growing spiritually now we are on a journey now what we are reading in bible we are internalizing it and we are imbibing it and we are acting it out so within the home we have you know parents modeling the things that they are learning of course we are all growing. we are not perfect but they can see that we are making effort we are all striving towards the mark of the high calling, you know? So it's important. What this does is that the faith becomes a real thing that they can follow. It's not just something we learn in church and then they don't see a connection. That's how, you know, the Israelites communicated their faith to the next generation. You will see them building monuments. Abraham will have an experience. He will build an altar around it. You will find Isaac coming to that same place and saying this, you know, I think it was... Isaac, who was finding wells that Abraham had dug, because 
he was a part, is uh, Abraham's faith walk was modeled and was open in display in the eyes of Isaac. So Isaac could see that this is the God of my father, Abraham. The, let encourage parents, let the children know your God. And how do they know your God? It's not by you taking them to your church. It is by you showing them on a daily basis how you are interacting with this God and how you are living your physical life with the influence of this supernatural God. You know, so this is a very powerful thing. It, it, it helps us through the working with the parents to be able to establish genuine faith, genuine faith, real faith. You know, so this issue about building monuments is so powerful. The Israelites did it, you know, the family is believing God for something, you know, there's something happening maybe in the, on the mother's job, on the, on the, uh, or the father's job, there's a challenge and the family prays about it. They see how God moves and there's a solution. They see how we are journeying, how we are growing. Ah, before mommy used to shout, and what, the, the children can say, ah, God is helping mommy. She's now calm. <laughs> we know that mommies are the ones with the loudest voices most times, you know, so that's so very important. I, I remember recently I had like some prayer points and confessions I made, promises that God had given me, and I put them on my vision board in my room. And after a while, my son, 11 years, he came and said, hmm, this thing has been done. You know, and then remaining this. And honestly, I never called them to conference to say, oh, look at this thing. But they just knew that, okay, they might, maybe there are times they hear me confessing and declaring those things. They see it pasted there, you know, and they were able to say that, so, you know, they can also in their own personal life, if they have a challenge or have an issue, say, this is what I would like, like you to do for me, God, knowing that you have done something like this for my mother before or for my father. So this is very important that we encourage parents to have real life down to earth conversations where they communicate the faith with their children. Now, organize parents connect events. You know, um, we talked about... Um, um, this last point, encouraging parents to have real life conversation. These are kind of places where you have those kind of conversations. Have a forum. Thank God that, um, you know, the, the um, panelists had dealt with this very well. You know, if you joined from the beginning of the conference, that parent teachers forum, they are key. They are so important. They are so important. If we want to really collaborate, we need to be having conversations with the parents as a group, even apart from the one-on-ones. The one-on-ones would go to a deeper layer, you know, to personalize the experience. But generally, as a, as a group, we need to engage the parents from time to time. You know, so at this event, make it relaxing. Don't come with the, with the you, you know, with the mentality of we're the ones that want to tell you how you need to do it. You know, we come with, we are collaborators you have been given this responsibility and we have been called to partner with you. That's the mind we come with. So these conversations are to be relaxed. We want to hear what the parents are facing with their parenting. You know, we want to get feedback with the things we're doing that the children are reflecting or not reflecting. You know, we want to communicate what are our goals, our plans, what we want to achieve, what we are teaching the children. We also want to have... Um, um, specially designed training sessions where we call experts, you know, people who are authority in particular fields, say, say child development, for example, say career or something like that, you know, because many parents influence their children's choice of career. And it's good for them to be, if they're going to be influencing the children, they should be well informed so that they don't leave the children in the wrong way. What I've, I've talked about training of a child in the way it should go. There's a way each child should go and we cannot generalize. So the parents must be equipped. And these parents uh, connect events, a parent teacher for, for uh, uh, you know, places where we can have those um, clearly stated conversations where we equip them, we share resources, you know, if there are links, if there are apps, if there are, you know, different things that they can use, ideas. Then parents also talking together. You know, it's good to have this generally. Then it's also good to have it, you know, on a um, on a uh, common ground basis, meaning something like you have two parents of children within a particular age range. Let's say toddlers, for example, you know. So when one parent is saying, ah, 
feeling overwhelmed that in fact my child cannot sit for 30 seconds and other people are saying are you only sitting for 30 seconds for 25 seconds mine cannot sit for 15 seconds you know and an expert comes and says within this age range don't expect the child to sit for more than this number of minutes it's natural their brain is very active they are absorbing so much from the um, from the um, environment they are learning they are discovering things they are testing things they are tasting things you know so the child, th that parent who hears that kind of thing from another parent or from an expert has a rest in their mind that, ah, okay, something's not going on with my child. Say, for example, there are times I've had parents who were worried that their child wasn't speaking maybe like two, and they say, ah, the vocabulary is still so few, or you know, maybe the child is ha having issues, you know. But when they see other children within that, other parents within that age range who have gone through that thing or are going through the same thing, they recognize that, oh, it's not a problem. And if there is a problem, they're able to say, oh, my child is different from the milestone or the, uh, you know, the bandwidth of development, then what can we do, you know, so that we can help the child to um, um, overcome whatever challenge they're going through. So those um, parent connects are very vital. They are so, so important. I remember last year, uh, I worked directly in the teens church we had a teen summit and the last day we had a parent teacher forum. Before then, we did a Google form for the teens and for the parents. And we had the parents, we had questions, things we wanted to find out, you know, how they were engaging with their teenagers, how they were, how they viewed their teenagers in their spiritual growth, the things they were not happy about, things they were happy about, how they, you know, just rate your child, something like that. How do you think your child is doing in this area? You know, so we had feedback from the parents and we had feedback from the from the teens. Also talking about what is their relationship with that's that's aside, that's not even what we're talking about. So when we came to that meeting, we had an overview of okay, generally in this area, this is what most of most of the parents are saying. Generally in this area, this is what most of the parents are saying. And it helped our conversation when we came together. Of course, we still discussed other issues, you know. So there are um developmental issues, there are um um spiritual growth issues, you know, how are the children faring academically? How are they doing in their health? Those are different things that we can have in this parent, um, parent teacher connect. And um, they will really help a lot to move our work forward because the, parent, the parents are better equipped. They have a, a clearer view of what's going on, uh, a, a clearer view of what should be happening, you know, and all that. Next, um, Involving parents in what the children are learning. So it's very good that we, com we communicate and let parents be involved. So if there's something that they're learning or they've learned something, for example, let the parents know about it. Let them participate, let them support, you know, let them pitch in on those things. It helps to reinforce the work that we're doing. And, you know, they can follow up at home. If they know that you are teaching a particular thing, you know, uh, uh, a virtue, a value, or let's say a fruit of the spirit or something, you know, they can help to encourage the children to press into it and learn it even more. For example, in my teens church, our goal this year is to develop a stronger relationship with God through prayer and the word, you know, and so involving parents will mean that we let the parents know that ah, this is what we're, we're, we're of course, we, we, the parents were able to know um, um, through um, some of the activities that we did, you know? And um, I remember that we gave them journals early in the year. Now, sorry, I'll go back to um, positive feedback. I remember that when we gave them that journal, they're supposed to write out what they studied, you know? So when you read your Bible, a chapter a day, you know, so make notes. Okay, so we, we taught them how to take notes from the scriptures, soaps, scripture, observation, application, prayer and sharing, soaps. So everybody knows that. So we told them, okay, so make notes. Okay, this is what I observed. Okay, so Isaac jumped up from the from the altar and said, my father, my father, why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you know, so, and then they write it down. It means that they, what they are reading, they are processing it. So we sent those books, we gave them the books, the parents saw it and, you know, we shared what they are for. And I remember one of the children, the very first, Day, we told them um, 
we, so we mark those books from time to time. We tell them to bring it back, we look at it, we look at them, we mark. And I saw that a particular child had written out the books she wanted to study for the year. I was so impressed and I told the father, I know the father, the parents are very particular about their children's spiritual growth. You know, so I told the father that fantastic that in the whole class, we told them to have a goal because late last year we had had um, evaluation sessions and then we had goal setting sessions for the new year. So spiritual goals, academic goals, financial goals, health goals, values goals, service goals, things you want to do for God or, or, or for humanity. You know, so um, that particular child, and the, funnily enough, the very first book she wrote that she wanted to study for the year was a book we had chosen as, as teen teachers. So I shared with the parents, of course, they were very happy. They were um, encouraged, you know, that their effort at home and what we were also doing in school, um, in the, sorry, in the children's, uh, in the teens class was yielding effect. The child was imbibing, you know, so it's good that you let parents know what is going on within the teens or the children's church. Okay, communicate about what is going on. I think we have we have um, looked at this, but this one is talking about um, um, communication media now. So we could have newsletters that go out periodically. It's good to have things like that at the beginning of the year where you want to cast a vision before the parents that this is what we want to achieve this year. If you have a calendar, you can share it, you know, then have a, 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 you can share through WhatsApp, you know, to the parents that, that okay, these are the things we're doing. If you, if for maybe a particular um, section of the year, or maybe a couple of Sundays, you want to focus on something, you can communicate, you know, so use the media that works with your audience. Where will you find most of them actively, you know, engage with them communicate with them through those means. Okay, I want to look in the comment section. Can we share, before we go to the next thing, I know you can see my next point. Okay. Oh, okay, there are questions. Before we go to questions, we're going to have a Q&A session. Um, I saw someone say deep. I don't know what they were referring to. I don't know if this is Mr. or Mrs. Adekunle or Shinlo Iye. I don't know what they're referring to and if they want to share. Okay, I'm, I wanna see in the comments. Okay, someone said, okay says it's actually a situation we have on our hands currently where, where I worship. Please, can you share what that is? Which of the points are you referring to? Okay, I think the comments, they're probably re responding to something up. Okay. Okay, so I want to see in the comments, um, ideas, ideas that you have, that things you are practicing presently, Okay, I, I, I think I just missed a comment now. Okay. So please share with us, or if you want to raise your hand, I'll just take about one or maximum of two people. Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing comments. Are we here? You can raise your hand. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. or Mrs. Osia Moje said they share newsletter. That's beautiful. I want to hear what are you presently doing to connect with parents in your ministry? Okay, newsletter on what you have learned. Wow, beautiful. Somebody said they celebrate, same person, celebrate milestones. They call children on their birthdays. That's beautiful. Uh, and can you share, how does that touch the parents? I'm sure they will be very happy. Okay, we have three hands. 
I think we can take um we can take one or two so that we can go on. Please unmute the first hand. No, please don't take uh, Mrs. Adid, okay, she has spoken. Take either Mrs. Adekunle or take, um, oh, so take one of the other people so that we can hear others as well. Send reports oh, on WhatsApp. Hi. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for this session. My name is Uke. Um, so I was one who posted the initial comments when you asked about um, if it was a relevant topic, and I'm saying yes, it is. So in fact, tomorrow we're having a parents forum um, exactly. with parents in a particular class in church because I mean, children are in classes just mm -hmm. to be able to share some feedback with them. But I think one of the things I'm taking out of here is also that even though we have the big forums, the one on one with the parents is also very key so that, you know, we're speaking to specific issues because the bigger forums may speak to, you know, yeah, no. um, like general things. Yeah. Um, but this year, one of the things that we took up was the birthdays being very um, deliberate about it and it has really helped. So mm -hmm. places where the parents were not very receptive, you know, because the children don't have phones. So you're calling them, I'm a children instructor. So you're calling them mm -hmm. to say, oh, we're calling because it's the child's birthday. They're very happy. And then we're also going around with visitations. It's quite difficult because I'm in Lagos. But, you mm -hmm. know, every time you make that sacrifice, they appreciate that in the midst of the traffic and the busy schedule, you're mm -hmm. reaching out to them. It has really helped to foster relationships between the parents and us as instructors in church. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we can take one more person. Okay. Um, good afternoon. My name is Osamu J. Innocence of Samuji. Um, like I said, one of the things we do, we we um call children or send texts to the uh, parents' mail phones on their birthdays. On their birthdays, and the reception has been quite okay. They are they are happy, and then when our children, when the children are leaving our classes and going to the next set of class, we give them gifts. That their parents are aware of, just to like to bless them. Um, we do we don't really have the um parents forum. We've not started it, so that's one of the things I'm taking in this um meeting. Yeah, that's we need to awesome. establish that. We need to establish a parents forum. What we try to do is try to talk to parents one on one, but it's not really been received very well. So I think with the parents forum and the ideas that have been suggested, that will help us a lot. That will really help Thank us you a lot. very much. Thank yes, you. I believe so too. I believe so too. So the, the one on one, the one on one and the um, my son is as we go now, go to the office, the we'll see them. Please mute yourself. The one on one and the group meetings, you know, work hand in hand, you know. So it's good to layer them together like that other than having one instead of the other. Okay, so our next um, um, idea I want to share is about creating open house where parents can participate in the children or teens church. So have particular days, or if you want to keep it open generally throughout the year, where parents can actually volunteer to come and spend the time to come in, you know, and support the teachers. Or some can even just come and sit in to listen along with the children, you know, just to learn at their level and, you know, just to see really what they're being taught and how they're being taught. So that some parents want to know how you're communicating with their parents, with their teachers, pardon me, with their children and getting their attention because they don't know how to communicate with them at that level and get their attention, you know, so it can be allowed for them to come in and sit in, in the classes and just see how you're communicating the faith, communicating values, virtues, and all sorts of um, important um, things to the children. So it's good to have time um, those times where parents can actually come in. They can help with the service. You know, you can assign them to do one thing or the other. 
can ask them for what they can do. And if they are experts in something that you need, you know, you can bring them in. If you want to strengthen your praise and worship, you know, for example, you can have somebody who is a, a very sound worship leader and a parent come in from time to time to come and strengthen maybe the praise and worship team, you know, and minister along with the children, you know, and just model that worship true spirit-filled worship to the children, you know. So, and that also takes the burden of you for that time that the parents have to be the ones actively doing that particular um, activity. So it's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very good thing. Uh, we just pray that God will send laborers, you know, in the person of parents, you know, that God will really touch their hearts. But I believe that when we have these conversations this engagement with them, it's easier to have them coming. You know, when there's flow of communication, they know what we're doing. We're calling when they are their children and are, are having special um, occasions and milestone developments, birthdays, and the family celebrating one thing or the other. It's easy to call on them and ask them to come in into the children's church or the teen's church and be a part or contribute something or the other. Um, so the open houses are very, very good for connecting with parents. It helps them to see what we're doing, to appreciate our work even more. I know that um, um, parents who sit with toddler class, <laughs> you know, because many times they send the children to school, you know, once they come, they give them homework or plug them in front of the TV. They are not engaging with them like that and getting, you know, that kind of engagement rigorously for hours, like sometimes um, teachers get to do in school and sometimes in church. And they see them handling so many children at the same time. They get to appreciate the work that the teachers are doing. So it's a very, it's a win-win thing when we uh, leave our doors open and allow parents to come in. Next is to encourage positive feedback from parents. And I'll, I dare say not only positive, let's just say feedback. You know, um, if there are things that we're not getting right, it's good that we, we, we keep our eyes and our ears open to hear from, you know, those who are observing our operations, engaging with our operations, you know, interfacing with what we're doing with the children. So it's good to keep our doors open for feedback, keep our eyes, our ears open for feedback and be open to hear what um, they want to say. They may not always deliver it right, but it's good for us to pick the learning points. So um, that's a very um, a key idea for connecting with parents. Next, we have organizing periodic prayers with parents and teachers. The truth about it is that we cannot do this work, this ministry to children, by speaking fine words, by having motivational, well thought out lessons by having special programs, great appearances, fantastic. It is the spirit of God that nurtures somebody in the image of Christ, that raises a disciple of the Lord in each and every one of us. So if we want to achieve anything, we cannot do it without prayer. So if we are praying as teachers, we need to also be praying with parents because we are, like we said, co-laborers over these children. So it's good that we come together. Some parents don't even know how to really pray, you know, for their children, you know, and they will be able to learn, you know, from that. They're praying together, that corporate coming together. It's powerful. The Bible says, Psalm 133, how pleasant it is for brethren to, to, to dwell together in unity. You know, if there is a greater bond in faith you know, there will be better understanding when we are connected spiritually. Every other relationship can flourish based on that. So it's good that we have those times where we come together, we pray for the children, pray for ourselves, pray for the parents, pray for the teachers, and pray for the children all together. So these are very, very, very important. Now, um, next is creating support systems for parents whose children are in the same developmental phase. So I think we mentioned something like that when we talked about, um, about meets, uh, meetings, uh, parent-teacher meetings. Now, 
like I mentioned, then it's very good if we have developmental stage group classes, for example, where whichever way you operate in your own church, you know. So we have maybe toddlers, we have pre you know, toddlers, preschoolers, we have school age children, we have teenagers, you know, it's good for parents and teachers to move together, to meet together on those basis. So we have parents of toddlers coming to, to, to meet together. We can have specialized trainings, we can have prayers, we can have conversations about issues, um, how, we, how do we communicate the faith to a two-year-old, to a three-year-old, to a four-year-old? How do we, um, you know, for example, lead them to the Lord? How do you lead them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Thank God for what the keynote speaker talked about, you know, practical things like that. Okay, how do you help a child who is always throwing tantrums? How do you help a child who has low self-esteem? How do you help a child who is not, um, you know, school age, but is not... Um, 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 able to settle down, uh, has low attention span, different things like that. So think there are things that are peculiar to age groups. When parents come together on that level with teachers who are also taking those children, there is a deeper, more pointed um, conversation that addresses issues that concern everybody within that, that, um, that sphere. So those are very important. We create that support system, we bring resources, bring support, encourage, challenge, inform, equip for that specific group. It's very powerful. So if we're having a general meeting, for example, we choose, we are talking about something, there's a, teen, a parent of a teenager here, what they are dealing with is very different from what toddlers are dealing with. So when they are talking, they can only just talk about when they were, their children were toddlers, but you have not addressed their own issue. You know? So it's very important that we have those developmental phase um, gatherings, class gatherings, you know, stages of the, the growth uh, and development of the children in our conversations. And that brings me to the end. Um, there are um, resources online you know, we can join Christian parenting um, groups, you know, books. There are free coaching calls. You know, how do you minister salvation to a particular, to, uh, to different ages, to children generally? How do you develop a corporate, maybe family, um, Bible reading culture, different things. So um, we should take advantage of all those things. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your participation and your contributions. And we will be going now into the questions and answer session. Yes. So if you have questions, um, I know we have some questions in the chat. It's going to be really hard for me. So if you can repost your questions now, I will try to take them up. Oh, someone wants to see the last slide. The last slide. Sorry. Am I still sharing? Can you see my slide? Please help me check with me. Help me comment if you're seeing my slide or I need to share again. Is it showing? Comments? You can see the slide. Okay, so let me go to the last slide. Mm. Yes. That's the last slide. I'll keep it on so that you can see it while we take the question and answers now. Okay, to get a PDF copy of the slides, um, I believe that we'll be, we may be making those available to those who registered, we'll be sharing the resources, I believe. So the PDF. 
You're very welcome. Thank you. Please, let's have the questions. I, I saw some questions earlier when I was asking for comments. Unfortunately, I can't scroll all the way to them. So please, if you posted a question earlier, please post it again now. Thank you. And if you want to unmute, I can take about two people. I think a question has come in. Okay. Um, Christian Parenting Group. Mm, there are different ones. Um, we will, I think we would put it in the PDF. So the Christian Parenting um, Sites and other resources as well. U version. On U version, for example, if we all know, I'm, I'm sure we all know U version, you can actually engage your whole class in Bible study, for example. You can have parents engage their family, you know, especially for those children that can read, you know, and have devices to so have family study on U version. How do you share one-on-one -on -one information to parents of the teenager and still earn the trust of the teenager? Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. So um, the, I think there was, I want to be sure I'm seeing, I'm not missing any question. I think there was one before that. I just want to keep Okay. So um, the, okay, I can see the questions. So let me talk about um, confidentiality and, um, and uh, feedback, giving feedback or engaging parents. When there are issues that you are dealing with with a child, there are some that are sensitive, the child needs you, the, for example, the parents can't handle that information, especially if you know those parents you know, when you know the kind of parents a parent is, and they may not be able to handle a particular thing right without damaging the, either the, um, um, what's the call now? The uh, minds, not mindset, the spirit of the child. Do you know, some parents want to hear, ha, how can you? You know, they just take it up like that. And they, they, they don't have that calm to process the issue, separate the child, and you know, help the child overcome whatever it is that they are facing. It's very dicey. Um, if it is something that is not life-threatening or that requires that the child, the parents be in the know, you can actually handle it. Maybe have somebody else brought in, maybe like maybe the pastorate, for example. You know, we've had issues like that that you know within the teens church and the pastorate, we handle the teenager because we know the parents will not be able to process it well and take the right steps, you know, that will not scatter everything all together. But there are cases where you will have to tell the child, for example, a child is pregnant as a teenager, or you notice that, the, thank God we're talking about a teenager, you know, maybe a child has stopped going to classes in university, maybe somebody else brings it to your notice or you observe through conversations, you need to bring the parents in or a child is suicidal, for example. They need, to, they need to know. So there are issues you need to clearly tell the child. The solution cannot be handled between the two of us alone. We have to bring your parents in. However, you need to also support the parents to bring in the right mindset such that they can and do the situation properly. I hope this answers your question. So that's why when we're handling cases that have to do with confidentiality, there are some matters parents may not need to hear and they can be resolved. But there are some matters parents must hear, uh, apostle must hear this, you know, so we must make sure that apostle really hears, you know, but not so that they can deal with the child in a particular way, but so that there can be mutual collaboration to move the situation forward. And at the end of the day, it is for the best in the interest of the teenager or the child. Okay. So earning the trust of the teenager is that in other cases where they didn't need to hear, they did not hear. Maybe they did something, you caught them doing something, you didn't quickly go and report, ah, your child, this is it. 
you undoed it and that was it. The, the, the parent never heard. That child would, 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 you know, appreciate you that, ah, if my father had heard this, he would have hung me, you know, but you undoed it and they would, they would, I feel it would really help them. Now, how can a minister help communicate this practicality of monument building with parents without seeming intrusive? Okay. Intrusive, I believe the way that the matter is presented or the topic is presented is what, you are not coming from the angle of you've not been doing this or we have observed that your child <laughs> does not know how to pray. That means you are not praying at home, you know. That's not how we're coming. When we come in in our relationship with parents from the angle of we are co-laborers, these children are our children. You know, they may be of biological children, but there are children in the faith, you know, and we're not here because we know better than you, even though we may, you know, and we're not, even if we do, we're not going to say, now do this because you don't know, you're not going to be doing it right. You know, so the way we come in would determine how we are received. Some parents are defensive, no matter what, you know, but when we have all those other things we've talked about, regular communication, comments, feedback, good, good feedback from time to time, the day you come in with something that you want to, and when I feel that this uh, monument thing should actually first of all be, be communicated to the larger group, you know, let's have it a, 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 in, a, in a group communication, group meeting with parents, you know, then we can now go deeper on a one-on-one. -on -one. So in that case, nobody will consider it in, in, intrusive because everybody's hearing it together and it's something that we all need to hear together. So I believe that that takes care of uh, the fear of intrusion. But this issue of intrusion, if you are really engaging with children and teenagers as you should, you will have intrusions because that's why we are here. We are here to intrude into their lives quote unquote, if you get what I'm saying, we're here to get into their matter. You know, that's why we're in their lives. Not to just look at them on the face of, wow, nice dress, you're fine. You have listened in class, good boy, good girl. No, we want to know how, how much of these things are they really becoming. So it's about being intrusive, but how do we approach it? We don't approach it from the angle of, I want to see what's going on in your family. Your family is not doing it right. No, we're coming from the angle of, oh, we've observed this, we've been teaching this, you know, we want you to help us follow up at home, you know, encourage them to do this, encourage you, you know, so, you know, so when we come in with positive comments from time to time, the day we come in with something that is an issue, they won't consider it intrusive. The parents that I told about what that child had done, that was very, very commendable at the beginning of the year, and their goal for studying the Bible and how they were following instructions and even went beyond to even do more than we asked. We asked. Well, if I come another day and tell that parent, I, I observed that as a matter of fact, I've, run, I've done it. I went to the parent and told them, I observed that this and this, although I shared with the father the first time, the second time I spoke with the mother, that your daughter, she's tall. The clothes she wears, when she's standing, they are short. How much more when she sits? I know that she's not trying to draw attention to herself, but you need to be watching how she's growing and how the clothes are growing on her. You know, and the mom was had to explain to me that her, huh, you need to know that we fight all the time because our own sense, and, and I like the girl's sense of fashion, funnily enough, she has a very unique sense of fashion, but we just want to make sure that the clothes are the right length, you know? So because we've had positive conversations before, when I came to say, ah, can we watch the length of the clothes? There was no pushback from the parent, even though I was addressing something that a lot of parents will find very offensive. How can you say my child's, my, my parents talk to me like that? Why, why are you saying my child is, and the child is short now, so the clothes is not too bad, you know? So we have it like that, you know? So when we've built a relationship, it's easy to get into those nitty gritty matters without um, offense. And the way we present it also matters. I believe this helps. Okay, somebody said they've tried once and the parents walked out. Okay, I believe this is, I don't know, the way my, my um, charts are moving. I, I'm, okay, it's a better view. As I'm scrolling, they're just do 
How do we share one-on-one -on -one information to parents of a teenager and say, okay, I've done that. How do you handle a parent that's always angry with teachers who correct a child's misbehavior? Well, patience, prayer, and getting the right approach as the school leads. So um, basically, those are the three things I would say. With patience, with prayer, and the way we come, the approach with which we come. There are some parents that they don't want to hear from outside. Even they don't acknowledge when their parents' children are wrong. It's a bad thing, you know. They themselves do not acknowledge when their child is wrong. And that's bad parenting because you can't correct that child. Uh, 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 and so they can't tolerate it if another person is telling them that the child is wrong. But the way it is presented matters a lot. The way it is, and you remember I mentioned that if you want to bring something to a parent, you must come from the angle of the issue. We are in this together. This is my child as well, you know, and you come with a solution. So you are not just saying, ha, ah, your child is doing this. How is he stopping the class? Blah, 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 blah. No. We can look at, for example, a toddler that. You can look, if, for example, the child is always having sugar rush, you can tell them, when you're coming to church, make sure you don't give them things that are too sweet. Do you understand? You know, so we observe that the energy is much. And the way we present these things really matter. It, it, it uh, affects how they receive it. Okay. Okay. I'll take one more. I think I'm being told our time is up. We need to round up now. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, if your question has been missed, I don't know if you can put it in the feedback form. Maybe we'll be able to look into it in our future conversations online or maybe in other meetings that we'll be having. I really wish I could take this um, um, one question. So I'm seeing a question here. I really... Have we been told to leave yet? I don't think so. So how can we minister? How can a minister do one-on-one -on, -one to, on very sensitive, sensitive issues, e.g. a child is not in school but should be, a child is being used as a nanny, or the child sleeps in, in class because they, make, they wake up too early to do house chores. Okay? Now, this is about family functioning, all these things I see. That means there are things going on in the family that require a bit of intervention. So in this kind of things, it may be good to bring in the church leadership because they would likely defer more to the church leadership than, than they would uh, just hearing from what is going on, what you, you have observed through the child. So the child is giving us a picture of what is happening in the family as a whole. I think we should leave now.